Jackie Kennedy's vineyard sold for $65 million. This is what it looks like inside. 25 years after the passing of an iconic American First Lady, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis's stunning Martha's Vineyard estate is now on the market for a whopping $65 million. The exclusive island retreat, which has served as a popular summer destination for wealthy New Englanders since centuries past, offers unparalleled luxury and beauty that keeps tourists flocking to its shores every year. Jackie was among the select few who chose to stay on the island, which is largely seen as a summer holiday destination. This breathtaking estate encompasses 340 acres of land and an impressive 6,456 square feet of living space. It's time for us to take a guided tour around this incredible property and learn some interesting facts about its landscape. Welcome to Redgate Farm. Redgate Farm isn't your typical farm, boasting a whopping 340 acres, an impressive size that's worthy of its own name. Prior to becoming the magnificent residence it is today, this land was once used for sheep farming. Renowned architect Hugh Newell Jacobson lent his talents to the property in 1981, designing a main house with an attached two-story guest house. Before these additions were made, there was only a small hunting cabin on the grounds. Then, Caroline Kennedy commissioned Yale's School of Architecture Dean to redo and expand the primary residence in the year 2000, cementing this estate's place as one of boundless beauty. How many bedrooms? Despite its impressive 6,500 square foot size, the main residence of Jackie and her family's summer estate only had five bedrooms, still providing a luxurious escape for when they wish to get away. Her children and grandchildren would often join them during these trips. After her beloved husband, Aristotle Socrates Onassis, passed away more than a decade prior in 1968, Jackie acquired the land for a secluded island home in 1979. Perhaps it brought back memories of their secret nuptials on an isle off the coast of Greece that solidified Jackie's affinity for these far-off havens. This is what's included inside. The lush, spacious backyard is ideal for hosting large family gatherings. Inside this luxurious primary house are a formal sitting room with an inviting fireplace, a living and family area, a drawing room and chef's kitchen equipped with top-of-the-line appliances. The upper floor features four sizable bedrooms, each outfitted with their own bathroom, as well as the grandmaster bedroom, including its dressing room and beautiful ensuite. Furthermore, there's also a den, two office studios, two powder rooms, three fireplaces, laundry room, and basement to complete your perfect abode. Divine Design and Style This exquisite room exudes grandeur with the perfect combination of hues and patterns, all enhanced by natural lighting streaming through large windows. When her better half became president in 1960, Jackie Kennedy employed fashion designer Oleg Cassini to create her first lady wardrobe. According to Newsweek, she splurged nearly $150,000 on fashionable items in 1961, an amount far exceeding JFK's presidential salary. It was precisely this kind of stupendous style that made our beloved First Lady so admired. Jackie was all about the water. With a huge pool, homeowners can revel in the water at any time of year. There are two freshwater ponds located nearby as well so occupants have plenty of aquatic options to choose from. To get to Martha's Vineyard, one must board one of several ferries throughout New England and Manhattan. The journey is estimated around four and a half hours. Alternatively, faster rides such as Martha's Vineyard Fast Ferry exist for those who prefer speed over extravagance. A piece of the past. When Jackie purchased the land in 1979, the hunting cabin was its solitary construction. Knowing that it would be essential to preserve a sense of heritage, she made sure to carry over this feeling into her plans for the mansion and all the other buildings associated with it by keeping them stylistically similar. Admire the unforgettable views of one of two ponds from your cabin or explore our gardens and library in addition to various biking and hiking trails on the property. The Fairy Treehouse not only was Jackie passionate about preserving the property, but she also had a knack for creating something spectacularly new. Her marvelous work consisted of several impressive living spaces on the estate and an enchanting treehouse that provides unmatched views. 
built to be as sturdy as possible for our grandchildren. The gazebo-style structure is affectionately known as a fairy treehouse due to its unique design. Overlooking rolling hills filled with lush green land and sparkling blue water beyond. Ultimately, adding another charming element to the mansion grounds. Akina in Martha's Vineyard the Serenity of Martha's Vineyard, situated off the Massachusetts coast and composed of six towns, provided Jackie Kennedy with a peaceful retreat away from prying eyes. In particular, Redgate Farm in Akina, home to the Wampanoag Native American tribe, offered her exactly what she needed following the death of John F. Kennedy when she was only 31 years old, making her at that time the third youngest First Lady ever. You'd want to be their guest. In the photograph to the left of the primary living space, behind a beautiful turquoise pool, sits an amazing two-story guest house posting four bedrooms. This brings Jackie's estate up to nine total rooms, and it doesn't end there. There's also a three-bedroom caretaker's house and a two-bedroom guest apartment situated on her property, making for 14 bedrooms and four separate units altogether. With all of these options available to her, it makes perfect sense that Jackie only wanted five bedrooms in her main home. But wait, there's more. Jackie's estate was a paradise, with her own hunting cabin, barn, boathouse, and two garages. Not to mention an exercise studio and storage building for all her beloved items. She cherished horseback riding in the nearby countryside. However, this pastime tragically took away Jackie's life in 1994. While taking part in a fox hunt one November afternoon during 1993, Jackie had been thrown from her horse, causing swollen lymph nodes to be found around the groin area of the examination later. In January 1994, she received chemotherapy as treatment for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. However, her fight would be in vain. Tragically, yet peacefully, during the month of May that same year, she passed away in her sleep. Too old to be single Sitting atop the property's inclined coastline, a beacon offers an atmospheric maritime feel that starkly contrasts with Jackie's city upbringing throughout her childhood and young adulthood. She was accepted for a junior editorship at Vogue, yet decided to quit after just one day due to the editor reprimanding her unmarried status when she turned 22. Barbara Leeming's biography illustrates that Jackie had surpassed the marriageable age in her elite circles. This likely explains why she was presented to John F. Kennedy shortly after, leading up to their engagement not long afterwards. The Perfect Spot for a Literature Buff For many authors, searching for a tranquil atmosphere to make progress on their work, escaping to the serenity of nature is often just what they need. Jackie was no different. With her degree in French literature and years spent editing books, Martha's Vineyard would have been an excellent environment near the shoreline where she could focus uninterruptedly. A great number of writers through time have had similar tendencies, striving toward quietude when crafting words and verses that will stay forever etched in our minds. Notable literary figures such as Shel Silverstein, David McCullough, and Judy Bloom have all resided on the island. Additionally, celebrities seeking to escape from public attention often visit here in search of a temporary reprieve. Dorothy West was another author who called this place home. View from the Top be astounded by the breathtaking beauty of the land from an aerial perspective. Enjoy a peaceful swim in your private pool, some friendly tennis matches on your court, and freshly picked vegetables and blueberries from your garden. Plus, with over one mile of coastal beachfront alongside this charming estate, there's no shortage of relaxation opportunities. Jackie's close friend, Rachel Mellon, finally known as Bunny, contributed to the breathtaking landscapes. She's widely admired for her exquisite skill in horticulture and landscape design a feat that was most notably exhibited through her renovation of the White House Rose Garden. It may be challenging to fathom that these remarkable gardens are a carefully orchestrated artistry rather than natural beauty. Seclusion at its finest Jackie's appreciation for expansive landscapes and ample privacy could be attributed to her parents' preference of sending her to a college far from the hustle and bustle of New York City. This is evidenced in the home she built, which offers panoramic views of both ocean and extensive farmland, as well as over a mile of private beachfront that ensures seclusion when desired. The attention Jackie gives to details such as building separate guest quarters further demonstrates how much value she places on having plenty of space around her. 
how to get to and around the island. If you're not a fan of water-based transportation, then the airways are your go-to. Martha's Vineyard has its own airport, which operates year-round from Boston and other areas, plus seasonally from New York. Upon arrival on the island, tourists can also use bus services provided by Martha's Vineyard Transit Authority all year round. This picturesque travel hotspot is known for its mild climate, with temperatures staying in the low 80s Fahrenheit range during the summer months, ideal weather to enjoy life alongside 17,000 locals. 200,000 visitors pass through each summer. Lots of noteworthy events on the island. Martha's Vineyard is a popular island that's had an intertwined history with the United States military and was even home to one of America's most infamous political scandals. Not only this, but it's also become extremely well-known for being the filming location of the classic movie Jaws in 1975. To commemorate its 30th anniversary in 2005, Martha's Vineyard held a weekend-long festival dedicated to celebrating Jaws as part of their unique cultural heritage. A devastating loss. The Kennedy curse became more known when Jackie Kennedy's son, John F. Kennedy Jr., and his family members tragically perished in a plane accident five years after her death in 1994. Despite the unfortunate circumstances, Gallup recognized Jackie as one of the 10 most admired people during the 1900s, with 27 mentions on their list. An incredible testament to her legacy. Jackie's first task in the White House was its design. Jackie's inaugural assignment in the White House was to honor its nation's past by including a variety of antique decor elements. This absence of heirloom furniture had become common practice as each president and their family members were allowed to take house pieces with them when they vacated office. To ensure that this long-standing practice would come to a halt, Jackie put forth legislation declaring that the White House furnishings should belong to the Smithsonian Institution and assembled the Committee for Preservation of the White House. Her partiality towards traditional decor is demonstrated by her fondness in preserving this Cape Cod home, which has been kept intact for over four decades. Why Martha? Growing up in Southampton, New York, and frequently visiting the picturesque island of Hammersmith Farm in Newport, Rhode Island, set Jackie on a path to find solace there throughout her life. An avid language learner who loved reading, as well as competing in horse riding competitions, it's no wonder that this stunning East Coast spot became her final home during the last decades of her life. Initially, the island was christened Nope by its indigenous inhabitants, which literally translates to Land Between the Streams. Then, in 1602, it gained its new title, Martha's Vineyard, after a British sailor's daughter with that name, and due to the abundant viney shrubbery near its shore. Remarkably, however, there are not really any wine-producing vineyards on this isle. A small but impressive island. Martha's Vineyard is a paradise in its own right. Only 96 square miles with 125 miles of coastline. From an aerial perspective, you can witness the impressive estate encircled by luscious greenery. Moreover, what makes this place even more extraordinary is that there are no chain stores. It gives entrepreneurs and shopaholics alike a chance to purchase unique items they won't find elsewhere. To top it off, Martha's Vineyard has over 50 local farms, which ensures restaurants provide visitors with delicious dishes created from fresh ingredients. And if that wasn't enough, farmers markets offer nutritious options for those on the go.